Hey guys, Henning and Morden from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, this is gonna be a little bit different. So mm -hmm. this is another productivity kind of tips, but this time in Photoshop. We haven't really done many of these before. It's mostly been ZBrush and other 3D related yeah. programs. And unlike most of our other stuff as well, this is not hardcore film. This is like whatever mm -hmm. you do, concept art, illustration, photo manipulation, or like whatever it is, this is super useful. So this is just a collection of 10 plus minus one or two <laughs> bonus tips uh, that we found to be really useful in yep. Photoshop. So the first one is the eyedropper tool. So the Photoshop eyedropper tool can be used outside of Photoshop. Yeah, who knew? Yeah, who knew, right. So let's just, if we minimize this, let's say you don't want to have to drag in an image or you don't want to have to screenshot something in order to get it into Photoshop. So if you just hit the I key or if you're in brush mode, you can just hold down Alt and then you can color pick something off to the side. Let me just get a small, like if you have something that's zoomed in like this, it'll start moving. So if we just go all the way out, hold down Alt, and then start using the color picker. You can color pick anything within Photoshop as well, but as soon as you get off the canvas, you can color pick whatever is outside the window. This could be in your browser, mm. or you have a separate application open, you can color pick anything. That is super useful, I think. I've done so many unnecessary screenshots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and let's say, now the next one is also, this is, I call this the color picker on steroids. Mm -hmm. So let's say we want to do, we want to paint some new stuff on this and we don't want to have to use whatever's up here or maybe you just want something that's close at hand. Mm -hmm. So with shift, alt and the right mouse button on windows, so let's do shift, alt, right mouse button, we get this new color picker up. I'm new and new, it's been here for years, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, on Mac, that would be control, option, and command mm -hmm. to get this up. So one more key, I believe. Uh, one little issue with this is you wanna go off to the side and change your 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 hue over here. Uh, then, you know, you can see the saturation levels they, and the lightness level, they change. So if you hold down space, it sort of locks this in place. You can go over here, release space, and yeah. then go up and down. So this gets a bit, this is a bit tricky in the beginning, <laughs> but uh, after a while, this becomes pure muscle memory. Yeah, so it's it's a pretty it's a pretty cool tool, pretty advanced. Yeah. I, it's like it's really, sometimes hard to keep track of all these keys. <laughs> yeah. I should also mention that in the preferences, you can enable this as a color wheel. So you have the color wheel around. Mm. Uh, this is just the default one. I just, what I prefer to use, but yeah. you know. I, I personally prefer to use the color wheel, just because, mm. It's a wheel. <laughs> it's a wheel. <laughs> um, another one you just saw me use was changing the brush size here. So instead of using, I think, plus and minus. Yeah, the be, brackets? Yeah, the bracket keys yeah. to change it. If you, on Windows, so these changes again. If you, on Windows, hold down the Alt key and the right mouse button, and you go left to right, that's size, and up and down, that's the hardness of your brush. Mm. On, on a Mac, it's Option, Command, and then drag anywhere on the canvas. So just, you know, just click on it. On Windows, that would probably that will give you this the color picker i believe so or putting weird things on there <laughs> so they're different from from mac and windows just yeah. keep that in mind a really cool thing is a bunch of these tools have different modes to them so let's say the brush or like the marquee tool for example has the rectangular marquee uh, and the hotkey for that is m and if you hold down shift and m you can toggle through the different marquee type selections. Mm. So with brush, that would be B for brush, and then shift B to toggle through the different kinds of brushes. Really helpful if you don't want to go over there, click the thing, yeah. just keep it all hotkey wise. Used as all the time. Mm. And like most of you know, if if you're painting a lot and you, you know, do oh, you want to do this thing here? And uh, actually, I want to create a new layer to do some stuff there. And then you forget about that layer and then you like, a hundred layers up and yeah. all of a sudden you can't keep track of your your Photoshop document anymore. If you go to file, go to scripts and hit delete all empty layers, it's just gonna get rid of all the clutter and everything in your document that's yeah. not necessary. And to create a new layer without a dialer box, that's control shift alt n I believe. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just control shift n. Because mm. like you oftentimes don't want to have like you just want to create a bunch of layers like Morton just did. Yeah. Now, th th these next ones are probably, I don't know, they blew my mind when I first discovered mm. it. It's probably going to blow your mind as well. <laughs> if they're not, I don't know, maybe you, maybe you have more exciting lives than <laughs> us. I don't know. We get excited about Photoshop tricks, okay? <laughs> so if you come to Window and Arrange, there are actually different kind of modes you can work in. So let's do this one here. So now we've split our windows into, oh, this is actually for later. 
Oh, that was, uh, <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was a bit too advanced. <laughs> that was a bit too advanced. Uh, so let's say two verticals. So we only have two documents here. So you can actually work on, you know, like, oh, no, I want to work on this one over here, and I want to go back and work on this one. What I usually use this con these two split windows for is if I have something I want to share between the documents, uh, which is not just a layer. Uh, like here, I have a group. So usually with groups, I can't drag it into the thing. Oh, maybe you can. Oh, maybe it's a new thing. Um, let's say you couldn't. Uh, what I usually use it for is I drag the group just directly onto yeah. the document. And it's been really helpful. But there are a bunch of other things you can do with these kinds of split windows. So um, if you want to work, let's say you want to have an overview of something that's like you say you're doing a super close up painting or something on on this guy over here. Let's just undo this again. There we go. So this guy, he's getting painted really up close, but you really want to have the overview of what you're doing as well. Mm. You go back up to window and arrange, hit new window for the current document. It's just going to duplicate this window. So let's drag this over here to the side. So this is now a duplicate. So anything we do on one window is going to be um, it's going to be replicated on the other because they're exactly the same. It's not going to update in real time, but we don't really need it to. Yeah, it's more fun. Yeah, I don't actually like the terminology duplicate because it's actually an instance, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I like guess. it's because it's, it's not it's not a copy of it. It's a there is a live bridge between them. So if I start painting here, you can see this appears here as well. So. It's. I think it's a really cool way of just maintaining an overview. Very much um, so. Because it's so easy to get lost in the details. So uh, this is something that I, I sometimes do in 3D as well. Like you have one camera for close-up and one camera for the overview. Yeah. Because then you can just... Yeah, it, it, if you get lost in details, like... It, yeah, it's really easy. You see, you go all the way... Oh, God damn pixel grid. <laughs> uh, you can turn, turn that off. <laughs> it's really easy. Like, you know, you're painting something on the eyes or whatever you want to... Add some highlights, and then all of a sudden you realize you've been spending three hours down here. Yeah, and, and he doesn't have hands. <laughs> he doesn't have hands. <laughs> this way it allows you to keep an overview on it on, yeah. on a small and a big scale. Now, a really cool thing is if you hold down shift and the space bar at the same time. So regular space is just panning. Shift and space is multi-document spanning. Mm. So <laughs> multi-document panning. Uh, so you could do that, like make sure that it's uh, like in the same area, and it's just if you have multiple documents, maybe they're the same zoom level, makes it a little easier. The higher, the, the more zoom you have, obviously it's going to be more aggressive. Yeah. Um, it's a little, it's a weird handy feature that you might, that might come in handy sometimes. Yeah, it's one of these things that once in a, in a blood moon comes, comes <laughs> <Yeah>. in handy. <laughs> um, and then once you're done with all of this, you can just right click on your document and say consolidate all to here. So now you got rid of all this. You can also do that on window, arrange, consolidate all to tabs. Mm. So. But that's it's easier just to right click. So for people out there using a lot of color, which I guess most people in Photoshop do, <laughs> um, if you go to Window and Extension, we have something called Adobe Color Themes. So Adobe Color Themes, I think it just pulls from something that they have online. This is also... If yeah, you, I, th I think it might be the Cooler Library. Oh, yeah, or that's Color or yeah, however you pronounce like that, it. Yeah. K -U -L -R. It's really nice for getting... You know, maybe you want to uh, some explore some 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 new color themes for whatever you're doing, or you want to have a complementary color scheme. Mm. It's really easy to drag this around. It's like, okay, this would be the complementary color here. So it's just a really handy way to keep track of colors. Yeah. So you don't have to have color schemes in your head or yeah, or like or like Google color wheel and like that's <laughs> what that's what I've been doing a few times. Yeah. You just, what is a complementary color of blue? And you're like, ah, oh, you probably know this, but you know, yeah. And staying with the painting, let's just hide these. We have this beautiful, I don't know, it's a red dwarf. Let's call it a mm. red dwarf. And it's a super nice painting. And it has a lot of transparency to it, so there's a lot of fade in it. And a really cool feature is this transparency lock. This just allows you to, any action that you do on the layer now is kept within, it's kind of like it creates a mask based on mm. wherever there's content on here. So if we paint now, you can see we are stuck within the boundaries of where we have painted. Mm. Pretty cool, actually. So it's uh, really useful if you're doing, particularly if you're doing actual painting and not just photo manipulation. Yeah. So, you know, whatever you paint and you have a really nice fall off, you don't have to repaint that fall off. Yeah. You can just keep it as it is. Yeah. And let's turn these on again. In a classical painting Photoshop document, you often also end up with a lot of layers. 
And a really handy feature is if you hold down the Alt key or Option on a Mac and just click the I, it solos or isolates mm. that one layer and you just hold it again and click it. That sort of turns it on and off. Really quick, really handy to, to work with. And the last tip that we have is also Alt related is if you have, it's, it's sort of, it works similarly to the transparency lock. Um, let's do a quick paint there and let's give it some hardness as well. So this stuff here. Now you want to have a mask for this. So if you make a new layer, hold down Alt and click in between, you can see it sort of changes. So you just click there. Now this is locked to this, it's like a clipping mask. Yeah. So whatever you do on this layer now, um, let's say paint on this, it'll only affect this part. The nice thing about this is that you can keep it separate as separate layers. Yeah. This is oh. far less destructive. Like yeah. the transparency thing, that's more like, you know, if you're actually painting something, which mm -hmm. is a fairly destructive process. But if you, uh, if, if you want to keep this non-destructive, clipping masks are really the way to go here. Yeah. So I guess that's uh, our little tips and yeah. tricks within Photoshop for you guys. If you if you guys have any suggestions for your personal favorites, just please let us know because oh, yeah. everyone has these like million small little Photoshop tricks and tips and tricks. <laughs> so uh, feel free to share them with us and the rest of the community as well. Yeah. So thanks guys for watching. And if you want to see more content in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Cool. Thanks guys.